Now something for your ears, but this time controlled by your eyes. It's the extraordinary work of Zacharias Vermacusis. For people with paralysis to become musicians, the eye harp uses eye tracking to play virtual instruments. Here's a sample created by Zacharias. Pretty, isn't it? And hard to believe that Zacharias was creating the music with his eye. I asked him what the eye harp really is and how it works. The eye harp uh, is a gaze-controlled musical instrument. That means that you can play music in a similar way. You play with a traditional musical instrument uh, using only your eyes as an input. You can play real-time melodies, change uh, the chords, play arpeggios. You can use it alone or play jam and play music with other musicians and hopefully be part of a band. This is <laughs> the ambition to be able to communicate with other. So it's a traditional, it's supposed to be a traditional musical instrument. That is the purpose. Apart from the eyes as an input, you can use uh, any, any input device that can take control of the mouse pointer. So it can also be controlled with uh, head tracking. So it might be appropriate for many cases of people with disabilities. Why did you start working on this? <laughs> I had to decide what would be the topic of my master thesis. <laughs> and then I, I thought that, uh, you know, I had to watch that movie, The Sea Inside. It is a movie about a quadriplegic person that uh, decides to suicide in the end. So because, obviously, if he was not feeling, in my opinion, in my perspective, so so useful and creative. So the motivation for doing it is you know, to try to provide these people with more creative opportunities and make them express themselves. And I found out that there was no musical instrument designed explicitly designed for this purpose. So you had to start from scratch then to design this and to make it work? Yeah, I had to address uh, some problems. You know, there are many many applications designed for eye tracking, for drawing, for eye typing, uh, web browsing, even gaming. Mm -hmm. But uh, music has some special issues you have to address. And the most important thing is the temporal control that is required in music. So let's say in typing, there you might apply a dwell time. That means you look at the specific letter for a given time and then you choose it. Well, in music, this could not be applied because you want to play the note exactly the moment that you want to play it in real time. Mm -hmm. So I had to design, you know, to think about this and find out how I will address these issues. Who was this tested with to begin with? Were you testing it yourself? Yes, I, I want to mention here that at this point that I... I was inspired by the iWriter project. That uh, it's a project that uh, enables people with paralysis that basically they can move only their eyes to to draw, and they have put uh, online the instructions of how you can build a really cheap eye tracking device, and uh, it's an open source project as well. So for you know the taking the gauge of the user and and getting the the screen coordinates then you can do whatever you want with it. So it's like having a very cheap eye tracking device, a low cost one, because if you want to buy an eye tracking device, it costs uh, more than uh, 10,000 euros. The, the commercial eye tracking device, it's very expensive. So I built my own eye tracking device following their instructions. And uh, yes, I was the first subject of the evaluation. There has been no, not so much evaluation yet in other people because of the lack of many eye tracking devices. Now, I'm starting to, to to visit places with disabled people organizations and uh, I'm trying to get a feedback and if they like it and it seems to be okay so far. Uh, they seem excited. <laughs> and what sort of thing are they are they doing with this? Is this a different interface to something maybe people are used to trying? Is it completely new or have they got technologies that they're already trying to make their lives a bit easier? 
of the people with disabilities are already using eye tracker devices or head tracking devices or any other input device to speak, to write. So in these cases, they don't have to get accustomed again. They can use their devices. But yes, it's a normal musical instrument, so they, they have to study. They have to get used to this musical instrument because I try to do my best so far, but maybe a lot of things have to be improved. So it's an ongoing project. In working as a musician on this kind of technology, did it give you a greater awareness of what different people face when they would like to be creative and make some music themselves? I can tell that, <laughs> you know, I had this thought that uh, each of us one day could be disabled having an accident or, you know, so I put myself in this in this position and, uh, you know, I'm a musician, I play the accordion and if I was in such a situation that I could not move my hands, you know, for, for me music is very important, so I could not imagine myself without playing music. Then, <laughs> with that thinking, what would I like? to have as a musical instrument, you know, I try to imagine myself in this position and uh, how would I like to control this instrument, that was the thinking. But problem is that, as I told, it has not been tried in many users. My experience as a musician, I think, has helped me in designing it. It's open source. Does that mean that anybody around the world can pick it up and try it for themselves, in which case you may get more users to test this? From the beginning, I had decided that whatever I do with it, it should be open source because... For these people, communicating and expressing themselves is like breathing, I think. If you cannot express, then it's like you're in a prison. I mean, so for me, it will be moral to sell the air, you know. So that's why I decided to make it open source. And I'm pretty sure that there are many programmers out there that are very capable and uh, they might consider improving it as well, as long as they, they don't sell it. Mm-hmm. It has a Creative common license and you cannot uh, use it commercially. If we want to find out more and, of course, have a listen as well, because you've got some tracks that you've been working on online too, where can we find that? What's the URL? For the moment, there is just a, a blog spot I have made. It's the iHarp, one word, the iHarp.blogspot.com. There you can find a a demo video and a a link to download the application and the source code. I'll be interested to hear what becomes of the iHarp and, of course, to listen to the music that we might not normally actually be able to hear. Well, that's all we have time for this week. As usual, the links to all of our guest sites are on the BBC Outriders blog page. Also, you can get in touch in a number of ways if there's something going on or something that you're doing that I should know about. Drop me a line at outriders at bbc.co.uk or join in the discussions on Twitter where we are BBC underscore Outriders or on Facebook where you can find us by simply searching for Outriders. Thanks for taking the time to download this BBC Radio 5 Live podcast. To find other programmes you might be interested in, click bbc.co.uk slash 5 Live where you'll also find our terms of use. 